Hello, good morning everyone. So today we are going to discuss one of the most popular algorithms under the category of Bayesian learning and this algorithm is known as Nye Bayes classifier. It is one of the most practical Bayesian learning methods. So, when to use this algorithm? So, we have listed here few important points when we may think of using this nine base classifier. So, the first point is if we are having moderate or large training data set available with us, then we may go for this nine base classifier. And the second point is if the attributes or the features that describe instances in the data set are independent of one another and if each attribute has equal contribution then we may go with null base classifier. So let me focus upon this second condition once again. Attributes or features that describe the instances in the data set are independent of one another and each attribute has equal contribution in producing the outcome. So to clarify these two conditions, let us see one example. So once again we are referring to the example that we have seen earlier whenever we discussed decision trees. So in this example, we are having four attributes outlook, temperature, humidity and windy and the target variable or the dependent variable is play tennis. So this is the problem that provides us the weather parameters. And based on these weather parameters, we are supposed to determine or we are supposed to predict whether to play tennis or not. Right? As I stated earlier, nine base classifier is used whenever the features are independent. So, what we mean by features are independent? So, let me illustrate this with the example under consideration. So features are independent and every attribute has equal contribution meaning no pair of features are dependent on one another. For example, the temperature being hot has nothing to do with the humidity or the outlook being rainy has no effects on winds. Hence, the features are assumed to be independent. Further, each feature is given the same weight or the same importance. For example, knowing only the temperature and humidity alone cannot predict the outcome accurately. So every attribute that is outlook, temperature, humidity, windy is having the equal weight or is having the same importance. So the algorithm should use all those four parameters for prediction. Right? So none of the attributes is irrelevant and assumed to be contributing equally to produce the outcome. Right? So that is what we mean by independence of the features and equal contribution of the features. I hope you must have understood these concepts. Now, though this algorithm is being widely used in the domain of machine learning, I am listing here few of the applications of this algorithm. Those are very popular. So, this algorithm can be used for medical diagnosis problems and this algorithm is popularly being used in this domain 
Also, for classification of X documents, this null base classifier is being used. One more application I may state here in space, uh, sorry, in speech recognition algorithms. This algorithm is being popularly used. Now, let us go through the detailed description of this classifier. So, let us assume that we are having a target function f that accepts the instance as x and it produces the outcome as y. Right? Where each instance x is described by n number of attributes or features. So, every instance x is described in terms of n features x1, x2 up to xn. Right? And it is producing the output as y. So, we are talking about a classification problem wherein we have provided with the data set in which we are having the instances of this form like x and every instance is being described with a number of attributes and we would like to build a classifier that will classify the instances with some class label. So y here is the set of labels or the values those we are going to predict. Right? So, y is set of labels. Ultimately, what we are expecting is our classifier should give us a class label for the new sample or the new instance that is being presented to our classifier. The Bayesian approach to classify the new instance is to assign the most probable target value denoted here as y map. So, under the Bayesian approach, the most probable value of the function f of x need to be used and this value is denoted here as y map. So, y map is given as r max yj belongs to y probability of yj given the instance with attributes x1, x2 up to xn. Now, how we are going to interpret this expression? We would like to find out the probability of given set of input or data for all possible values of the class variable yj. And we want to pick up the output with the maximum probability. So, we are going to compute the probability for every class label yj. Right? yj belongs to y. And what is y? Capital Y. Capital Y is a set of all labels or classes. Right? So, obviously yj is denoting here individual class, jth class. Okay? So, we are going to find out the probability of each class yj given the set of input data. Right? And we are going to pick up the output with maximum probability. Right? So, whichever is the yj value that is giving us the highest probability that we are going to pick as y and that would be our expected class or rather predicted class. Now, here we are going to make use of Bayes theorem. So, we have studied Bayes theorem earlier and we know how to write the expression for Bayes theorem. So, Bayes theorem is given as probability of H given data set D is equal to probability of D given H times probability of H divided by probability of D. Now, let us try to rewrite this base theorem using the notations those we are using in this particular example. So, here in this example, our hypothesis is nothing but Y and that is giving us the target label. 
and our data is the instance that is x so we can replace h and d by y and x respectively and we can rewrite our base theorem as probability of y given x is equal to probability of x given y into probability of y divided by probability of x. Now using this base theorem we are going to rewrite our expression for y map. So how we are going to write this expression? y map is equal to r max yj belongs to y probability of x1 x2 xn given yj into probability of yj divided by probability of x1 x2 up to xn so now our expression is giving us this y map right so simply this probability of yj given x is being replaced right by base theorem and we have written here this y map okay in terms of the base theorem right now as we did earlier this denominator probability of x1 x2 up to xn this denominator is independent of the hypothesis and that is why we may omit this term and we may come up with a new expression by omitting this denominator as y map is equal to r max yj belongs to y probability of x1 x2 up to xn given yj into probability of yj. Now based on the training data that is provided it is actually easy to estimate each of the probabilities of yj. So this term probability of yj is easy to compute. How? We can simply count the frequency with which each target value yj appears in the training data and that will provide us this probability of yj. I will repeat, simply we need to count the probability or we need to count the occurrences of this target value yj in the data set and this will provide us the probability of yj right however estimating this term probability of x1 x2 up to xn given yj is somewhat difficult so computation of these terms is not feasible unless we are having a very large set of training data. Right? So, here while computing this term, we need to see every instance in the instance space many times in order to obtain the reliable estimates. Now, if we refer to our assumption that we made at the beginning of the discussion the nine base classifier is based on the simplified assumption that the attribute values or the features are conditionally independent given the target value so in other words the assumption is that given the product of the sorry given the target value of the instance the probability of observing the conjunction x1 x2 x3 up to xn is simply finding out the product of the probabilities for the individual attributes right so let me once again repeat this the probability of observing the conjunction x1 x2 xn can just be seen or it can be represented as the product of the probabilities for the individual attributes as these are independent of one another. Thus, we can have the expression, right? Like 
the probability of x1, x2 up to xn given yj is simply now the product of individual probabilities of the attributes. So, probability of xi given yj i varies from 1 to n. So, simply we are going to compute here the product of all probabilities of individual attributes given the label yj and this product will give us this first term probability of x1 x2 up to xn given yj right now by simply plugging in this expression into our earlier expression the nine base classifier can be represented as ynb equal to R max yj belongs to capital Y probability of yj multiplied by the product from i equal to 1 to n probability of xi given yj right so simply this is the expression that we have come up with for nine base classifier y n b equal to r max yj belongs to y probability of yj and then it is multiplied with the product of probabilities of x size given yj i varies from 1 to n so n number of features we are having right so as i stated this probability of yj can be computed easily given the data set and now it is possible for us to compute the probability of individual attribute given the target value right and for we are going to compute these quantities for every class label yj and for whichever class label yj we are getting this quantity maximum we are assigning that class to our sample right now, let me give you the example uh, so that you can have the insight how we are going to compute this label Y and B, right? Say for example, if we are having two classes, right? Then my capital Y is having two classes. So say yes and no. Okay. So this is my y1 and this is my y2 right so this actually is yj right so for every class label yj that means in this case y1 and y2 we are going to compute this quantity right so what we are going to compute so let us assume that we are considering y1 so for this y1 we are computing this probability of y1 into this product of probability of xi given yj. So, let us assume that we are having four attributes. Right? And these four attributes are denoted as x1, x2, x3 and x4. So, what we are going to do next is, we will be having here the product. So, this is multiplied with this product of all probabilities of all attributes given yj. So, we are going to compute probability of x1 given y1 because we are considering this y1 label that means yes, right. So, we are computing probability of x1 given y1 into probability of x2 given y2 sorry x2 given y1 into probability of x3 given y1 into probability of x4 given y1. So, here my y1 is class yes. So, we are computing simply the probability of yes into probability of x1 given yes into probability of x2 given yes into probability of x3 given yes into probability of x4 given yes and ultimately whatever is this quantity right that quantity is meant for this label y1 or yes similarly we are going to compute 
the quantity for label y2. So here my y2 is say no, right? So for this no also we are going to compute this. So we are going to compute probability of no into probability of x1 given no into so on up to probability of x4 given no. Right? So ultimately if we are having two classes yes and no, we will be having this quantity for yes and we will be having this quantity for no. So whichever is the maximum quantity. Say for example if this quantity for yes label yes is maximum then we are predicting that the sample belongs to this class yes right so i hope you must have understood these concepts now in this slide i am having two steps those we are going to implement in our nine base algorithm so the two steps in the algorithm the first is the learning step and the second is the classification step right so in fact I have written here in a simplified way the algorithms as far as the practical implementation is considered so practically if we would like to use this algorithm we are making use of these two steps the learning phase and the classification phase right now in learning step we need to estimate probability of yj and probability of xi given yj so we need to estimate the probability of xi given yj yj number of times so we are having here two nested for loops in the outer loop for each target value yj we are estimating probability of yj and also for each attribute value xi given this target value yj we are going to estimate this probability of xi given yj so for each attribute value xi of each attribute we are going to estimate this probability so after executing this example the input for this algorithm is the training set this examples means our training data set right that is the input for this learning phase so the output of the learning phase is the model or the learn classifier right and in classification phase once we are having this model ready with us we are going to present this x what is this x here this is this test sample right and using this classification algorithm now we are going to predict this y and b so y and b is given as r max y j belongs to y probability of y j into product of xi that belongs to x probability of xi given yj right so by making use of this expression we are finding out the largest quantity right and whichever label is giving us this largest quantity we are predicting that as the class label right so this is what we are going to do practically while implementing this naive base algorithm so i hope you must have understood this in the next class we are going to discuss this naive base algorithm with one example right so let's stop today thank you